everyone, let's take a look at our next multiple answer question. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to follow the directions here and then select, circle all of the correct statements. And there's going to be one for each trait. So it says find traits and graph the equation for a function g of x that if we look at, we're going to reflect our, our basic exponential function along the y-axis. We're going to stretch it vertically by a factor of three, and then we're going to shift it two units down. So if we want to come up with an equation for g of x, all right, let's start handling these things one at a time. So the first thing we have to take into account is reflecting a, a graph over the y-axis. And you do that when you put in a negative x in that argument, in that function. So that's how we're going to approach that. And if we're going to vertically stretch your graph by a factor of 3, you're going to have a multiplier of 3 on the outside. And then if you're going to shift 2 units down, you're going to subtract 2 on the outside. And when I say on the outside, I mean on the outside of the grouping symbols, the grouping symbols being these parentheses. All right, so the negative um, x that represents reflection around the x-axis, that's inside the grouping symbols, and the other two are outside of the grouping symbols. Now let's figure out what this function would be. So we have 3. Now f of negative x, imagine if you had a negative x here, there would be a negative x up here. So this would be e to the negative x minus 2. And if you want, you can basically write this as a fraction. All right, it's totally your call. Either one of these versions are totally acceptable for your function. So let's start finding some traits, and then I'll circle the correct statements. So for the domain, there's always three domain issues we look into in math. So we have to look for, hey, do I have a fraction where the denominator is zero? Do I have a radical with an even index where the radicand might be negative? Or do I have a logarithm where the argument is either zero or negative. So for if I look at my function, I don't have a radical and I don't have a logarithm, but I actually do have a fraction, right? So I would need to figure out when is that denominator equal to zero. And if you try and solve that, like if I took the natural log of both sides, right? This would cancel out, this would be giving me x equaling the ln of zero, but this does not exist. There is no natural log of zero. So there is no x value where that denominator turns to zero. So I don't have to throw anything out of the domain. My domain is going to be all real numbers. All right, the next thing I need to do is find x-intercepts. And we find x-intercepts by letting y equal zero. And then you always solve for x. You know, I always remembered it as I set the opposite letter to zero. So if I wanted an x-intercept, I let y equal zero. If I wanted a y-intercept, I let x equal 0. So let's go ahead and set our y values to 0. So I want to figure out when is 3e e to the negative x minus 2 equal to 0. And you could have used this version also. If you were writing it as a fraction, that would totally work also. So when I have this exponential equation, which I do because I have an exponential term here, I see my variable up in the exponent, I want to isolate that exponential term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to both sides and then ultimately divide by 3 because I'm going to have 3e e to the x equaling 2. So when I divide both sides by 3, I will get e to the negative x equaling 2 thirds. And then I need to log both sides. And I'm going to opt to ln. I tend to ln, especially with base e, um, but just in general I do. These cancel out and I get a negative x here. And this is the natural log of 2 thirds. And when I divide by 1, I get x equaling negative ln of 2 thirds, whatever that number happens to be. It's fine, and that would be my x-intercept, and you can see I wrote it as an ordered pair here. All right, the next thing is the y-intercept. Y-intercepts tend, in my opinion, to be easier to find than x-intercepts. You let x equal 0 and solve for y. Let me just put a little, little bar here just so we are knowing which trait we are working on as we go through this. Okay, um, so let's let x equal, x equal 0. So if I want g of 0 in this case, it would be 3e e to the negative 0 minus 2. Okay, well, e to the 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So if I take a look at this, my ordered pair then for my y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. And here it is. Okay. All right, the next thing we need to look for, and I know I kind of scrolled by it, is vertical asymptotes and holes. And I, I'm pu putting those together because... You would look for vertical asymptotes and holes wherever your denominator zeroed out, right? That's, or I would say here, this is for vertical asymptotes, it's when the denominator only equals zero. And for holes, it's when the, de the denominator and the numerator of your fraction both equal zero at the same time. 
And yes, we had a fraction if we remember, oops, excuse me, if we remember we were talking about that back in the domain, but we also talked about how that fraction never zeroed out. So since that denominator never zeroes out, I'm not going to have any holes or vertical asymptotes. They just don't exist in this graph. So if I'm finishing through this, right, so for my VAs, all right, the, the, there's none because the domain was all real numbers. And a lot of times with these exponential functions, you don't have vertical asymptotes. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could if you really messed with the equation, but we don't. And by that same rationale, if I head down here, I don't have any holes either. So let me do for holes, again, for this one, this would also be none because the domain is all real numbers. All right, now for n behavior, we're gonna have a little bit more fun. So n behavior for exponential functions is kind of fun to look at. So if we have n behavior, the first thing I wanna do, I wanna look at my function as x goes to negative infinity, and I wanna also look at the right end of the graph. I wanna look at the limit as x goes to positive infinity. And since both negative infinity and positive infinity are in my, uh, my domain, I do need to look at both ends of this. So I need to look at my function 3e to the negative x minus two on both ends. Oops, let me get rid of that equal sign there. On both ends of the x-axis, Again, because they're both in my domain. So if I look at this, this would be 3e to the negative of negative infinity minus 2. All right, well, a negative of negative infinity is positive infinity. All right, and e to the infinity is just like a really large number. It's infinity. If you multiply it by 3, it's still infinity. And then I'm looking at infinity minus 2, if you will, but it's just infinity. And that is, it just ultimately means that if x is going to negative infinity, this expression here is getting really, really large. So what that means is, well, let me color code this, all right? Since I'm heading left and my y values are going up, my n behavior here will be left end up, all right? So I have that one. And just based on that, I can already figure out what my end behavior would be. But let's go through the exercise of taking a look at this right end. So here, this would be the limit as x goes to infinity of 3e to the negative infinity minus 2. Now this is a little bit different because this turns into my fraction, right? So this is basically like saying 3 over e to the infinity minus 2. Well, e to the infinity is going to infinity, right? And three over infinity is basically zero. So this is zero minus two, which is negative two. So on the left side, excuse me, on the right side, and I say right because we're heading to positive infinity, right? So when x goes right, y's go to negative two. So I have a horizontal asymptote here at y equaling negative two. And that actually is consistent with the, the one that I graphed. I'm not the one that I graphed, the one that I circled. All right, so from here, what I personally would do is I would go over to my calculator and see what this graph looked like. I would start with the graphs and then I'd work myself backwards to get the range. I always get my range after I make my graph. So let me head over to my calculator. Let's go here and let's clear this out. So we're gonna do three and let's do e to the negative x. And then I'm gonna subtract two from that. Now, again, the app is a little different from the physical calculator. You, you, if you have the physical calculator, here's where you would hit zoom six. I'm gonna hit graph, and then I have to hit zoom standard. It's the sixth option down on here, but there we go. So if I take a look at this, and I, the nice thing about the app is I can pinch it. You can see that if I trace this, right, this is heading towards y equaling negative two, and you can see there is my left end up. And you even saw this thing kind of hit on a zero, and the y-intercept. I wish it would tell you the, the actual coordinates of them. Um, we, could, we found them already algebraically, but there is my graph. So let's go ahead and head back to here and see that this, whoops, let me circle it. This is the graph that matches what I saw, right? So here's my line or my horizontal asymptote here at y equaling negative two, and you can see the right ends up. I've got the x-intercept that we talked about. All right, but from here, we can get the graph. You can see that, at least in terms of the y's, it starts at negative 2 and it heads up forever. So if I take a look at negative 2 up forever, we've got this as a range. Now, the reason I have a parentheses here is because it was a horizontal asymptote and my function never actually hit a y value of negative 2. All right, so that is, if I scroll all the way back up to the work we've done, that is multiple answer number 5. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.